Today I want to talk about the Mandelbrot set and Java threads. In case you're not familiar with the Mandelbrot set, it's a beautiful fractal. As you can see here, we can click anywhere in the picture and then zoom in and see more interesting details. Okay, you may not have noticed, but the very first calculation was nicely animated from top to bottom. As you can see here, a nice progress bar, if you will. But if we click somewhere else, then we only see the end result. We don't see this nice animation anymore. Why is that the case? So let's look at the source code. We start with the image, then we wrap that image in an image icon and wrap that in a label. And then we add a mouse listener to that label so we can react to mouse clicks. Okay, then some standard swing stuff to uh, make everything visible. And then we calculate the image for the very first time. And then inside the add mouse listener, we register a mouse listener that at the very end calls calculate image again after zooming in or out. Okay, and inside calculate image, we call this helper method uh, that I wrote myself print thread info. And that's quite interesting. So you can see the first time we call calculate image, which is here in line 37. Indeed, we are inside the main method, which is called from the main thread. Right? That's just the thread that calls the main method. That's just how Java defines it. Okay, and then all the other times we're inside the calculate method, we are called by our mouse listener, which is called by AWT, which is called by swing, inside the event queue thread. Okay, so why is that important? If we look at the calculate image method, we can see every time we're done calculating one line, we call frame.repaint, which in effect uh, puts a request to repaint into the event queue. And those requests in the event queue can only be processed when the uh, event queue thread has nothing to do. So as long as we're inside the calculate image method in the event queue thread, we can't process those repaint requests. Whereas if we fire those repaint requests here from the main thread, then the event queue thread has time to do that in parallel. Okay, so in order to solve that problem, in order to always get those nice animations, we have to make sure that this code is performed always in a different thread, not in the event queue thread. And the old school, low level version is to say we create a new thread and the runnable that we pass to the thread can be a lambda like this. And then everything here, <laughs> uh, let's put it inside the lambda like this. And of course, we have to start the thread. That's a common beginner mistake to create one and don't start it. Okay. And then if we call it again, then we should get those nice animations every time I click somewhere. Let's see. Yeah, here it works. And it works again. Okay. And if we look here, we can see every time we call it, we are um, in a different thread. Okay, cool. So um, speaking of threads, if you look at the main method, how we create the UI, we create the UI from within the main thread. That's illegal. So it used to be legal to create the UI in any thread you liked. And as soon as you made it visible, uh, you weren't allowed to touch the UI anymore. Uh, over time, those um, requirements got stronger. And now Java says you are not allowed to touch the UI outside of the event queue thread. So how do we do that? We say event queue invoke later, then pass a lambda again, and then put everything here inside the lambda. And you won't notice any difference, but now for the first time, the code is correct and adheres to the Java specification. That's typical for Java threads. If you do something wrong, 99% of the times you won't even notice. <laughs> okay. Um, now these threads that we create here, if we look at those again, if I click more than one time, so let's say I click here and then I click here, you will see that every time uh, we are in a different thread. Well, of course we are. We create a new thread every time, right? That's a bit wasteful. Why are we creating a new thread every time? Can we somehow reuse a single thread so we can save maybe a hundred microseconds for thread creation and thread termination? And that's not so simple to do on this low level. So it's like this, you create a thread with a lambda, then you start it. And when the 
when the lambda, the runnable, is done, then the thread uh, is terminated. But there are some nice high-level features in Java. We can say uh, we want an executor, executor, let's call it as executor, that's a hard word to write. And we can get that from a static factory, for example, um, new fixed thread pool one, like this. And then we can call it like executor dot execute. Okay, then we pass the lambda and then of course we don't need the start down here anymore. That's just passing a lambda um, to a method. Okay, and now if we um, click two times, so let's click here, and let's click here, then we should see this the same thread every time. Let's see pool one thread one five, pool one thread one five, and pool one thread one five. Okay, so we save a hundred microseconds. <laughs> Okay, cool. And for this special case, when we only have one thread in our fixed thread pool, we can uh, also say new single thread executor. Oops, and that should still work. Let's see. Okay, then we click and we click again. If we now look, um, the output looks exactly the same, three times the same thread. I'm not sure if this simply delegates to the other variant or if this is inherently simpler, more efficient, less memory intensive. I don't know, you could look it up. Okay, cool. Now, if we think of threads and modern machines with multiple cores, of course, we want to parallelize um, intensive calculations. For example, we could say, why are we calculating all the lines sequentially? Can we somehow do that in parallel? And the first step to do that is to say, let's convert this imperative for loop into a more functional approach. We can say we want an in-stream range from zero inclusive to height exclusive, then call for each on that, pass a lambda accepting y, and then let's do it like this, so I don't have to move stuff around so much. And then we have to close the for each call and the entire statement. So that should still work and still be sequential. Yeah, it still works and it still seems to be sequential. Okay, now how do we parallelize this? That's really simple. We can simply say dot parallel and then call for each on that. That's all that we have to do. <laughs> okay, let's see. Oh yeah, and you can even see the parallelism, right? It's almost impossible to see because my computer is so fast. So if you click into these black um, areas, which are very hard to compute, uh, then we can see uh, the parallelism better. Yeah, so now the fork joint framework will uh, automatically split up the work uh, up until I think eight threads on my four core and eight hyper threads machine. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's that's really simple. So what are the basic takeaways? Um, the basic takeaways are if you touch the UI, you have to do that from the event queue thread and you do that by calling event queue invoke later and pass a lambda. That lambda will then be queued into the event queue and processed as soon as possible by the event queue thread. Okay, calling repaint is possible from every thread. That's always a thread safe. And um, if you're doing that from outside the event queue thread, then it can be processed immediately. Otherwise, um, it will be blocked until the calling code is done, basically. Okay, right. So compute intensive calculations should be performed on a different thread. You can do that with new thread start or with one of those executors. That's probably better to reuse, reuse the same thread all the time. Um, and if you want to parallelize for loops, that's quite simple to do. You simply create an in-stream range called parallel on it and then for each. So <laughs> before uh, this was built into Java, before Java 8, this would, would have been much harder to implement. You could have split the image yourself into eight different areas and then compute them and then some areas would be computed faster than the others and you wouldn't use your CPU um, as, as efficiently. So this is really cool for just <laughs> a dozen characters or something. Okay, cool. Of course, you have to be uh, wary or careful that you don't have any race conditions here. 
So what we do is perfectly fine. None of the images that are calculated or none of the lines that are calculated by different threads touch each other. They don't overlap. And then finally calling repaint triggers synchronization because internally that event queue is synchronized. So all the changes um, that you apply here for every pixel in the line will be published um, correctly. So I'm pretty sure <laughs> if you disagree, let me know in the comment section below.